Now this here, guys, this is another notorious bogging spot here. a minute yeah, my first fish ever caught in Australia Thank yeah. you. Justin, what is the name of this place? So this is called Indian Head. Um, I think, I think, this is where the smoke signals came from the indigenous, from the aboriginals, when they actually discovered um, Fraser Island. So they were up on the top of Indian Head, and um, they were putting out smoke si uh, signals as Captain Cook came past. I could be wrong on that. I'll, I'll have to double check, but I'm pretty sure that's where it actually happened. So this was the first sighting of, um, of Fraser Island. Now this here, guys, this is another notorious bogging spot here. So get into low range and just keep your momentum all the way uh, as you get through the dunes. Regina, you got me? I'm here. So I reckon for you, you probably want to start from there and like get into third gear low and just, just keep your momentum going. Uh, again, it should be okay. Like in winter, and we had plenty of rain last night, so the sand should be soft, but this normally banks up here with cars with, um, with people getting bogged. You guys ready to go? Okay, on, Brad wants to get out. What did he mean by third? Just I'm in first. First, second, third, and then keep the momentum going. Okay. In this thing here is just an absolute animal. I'm on, obviously, on 37s. I can just cruise it, hit the supercharger going. I'm in four wheel low, so I've got factory rear locker on, and then the torque split to the front, like. This, this, this thing is too easy, it's like cheating. I've never ever driven a car on sand like this thing is. Obviously that's all the horsepower. Ram T-Rex, see the trailers behind me up. Starts getting a, a little bit softer up here. Um, really interested to see how the girls go. Hopefully it's not gonna turn into a problem, but. There's Regina behind me. Well done, darling. Perfect. Thank you. That was fun. Yeah, it's a little bit of fun. It's just about momentum, huh? 100%. And here comes Joyce. Awesome. Well done, girl. loaded up uh, champagne we've parked in the northern car park but i'm going to walk them down to the southern so they get to go around the boardwalk um you know on that the headland down there uh we've got all the trailers fit in here pretty cool pretty neat another gen 2 plug coming right here Doop. locked everything locked done ready to go awesome feature gen ones padlocks and all that fiddly stuff that brad you used to love doing the whole padlock thing didn't you love it yeah yeah it was so much fun yeah, yeah. it was really so, fun the aut new automation dude is the way to go it's 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 just it's come up anyway we can get straight into champagne pools here 
but I want you guys to get the, the big reveal. Okay. okay. So we're gonna go this way first, then you're gonna see something pretty special in just a minute. Yeah? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, have a look at this. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Look at that, man. Gorgeous. Hey? Gorgeous. So normally in this bay for a year, you'll just see, like on a, on a nice clear day, um, you'll just see all sorts of stuff going on here. You can see the whales going up the coast. And it's just an epic spot. Beautiful spot. <laughs> That's where it gets its name. See what I mean? It looks like champagne, but when the tides, so it's, it, it changes all day, because when the tide goes low, the water doesn't break behind the rocks. So this turns into like just a, just a pool, like a flat pool. And then as the tide comes up, and the water starts spilling over the rocks, and it starts bubbling and creating, creating as it takes everything and starts creating this. But you can see all the way around, the rock goes into the rock. Champagne pools, man, what do you think? Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. It's just huh? beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's paradise, man. I feel like, like as I'm getting older, I see it different now. Yes. I've been there that many times I couldn't even count, but today it looks completely different again. What do you think? Excellent. Beautiful, huh? Yeah. I want to stay here. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately we can't camp here. We might get into a little bit of trouble with Parks and Wildlife. Um, but the plan this afternoon, I think we're going to make camp now. Still got one more day to go. Back, backwards, backwards. Audience, go back. I'm gonna do the reveal. Ugh. That is completely unscripted, unprompted. That is just what happens with a Patriot camper. I pulled up, I thought I was making lunch for everyone. And I told them, guys, go and have a play around. Go and have a look at this. So I'm doing, doing dingers on my barbecue at the front. Joyce is in here probably making the best thing here because this is what this family does. What are you making? Uh, just a turkey and brie sandwich. Just turkey and brie sandwich, just standard. You're loving the kitchen? Yeah. That's it's nice, great. huh? Awesome. Beautiful. And then Regina's got something going on over here. Jet balls going. What are, what are you eating? What are you doing? You sneaking a little feed, huh? No. Yep, no. It's leftover uh, curry chicken skewers from the other night. Perfect. And so I've got eggs. Yep. And I've got these baby chili. Oh, is peppers. that what you're doing in there? Sorry, I'll, I turned it off because oh. I thought while the camera was running we were going to have an explosion. Oh, oh no. I'll put that back away. on for you. Okay, and there we so go. I'm making a chicken salad. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome, I'm real. So we're having dingers, uh -huh. turkey and brie sandwiches, and chicken salad. Ooh, turkey we, and brie. We, we, and dingers. Dingers. And ding, dingers. Dinger. 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 Ah, ah, ah. There's no R in it. Yeah? Dinger. Dinger. And I love, I love this. This stainless bench top. Yep. First one that we made, we done a 2B finish, stainless steel. Okay. And we went away on the first trip with the kids, me and Sarah. Uh-huh. And the whole intention was to keep it stainless steel so we could use it as a cutting board. Yeah. fish and whatever. But when we came back, it was so scratched up. I went down to a brasserie, which is like a pub down in Broad Beach. Okay. And they had this on their countertop. Oh. And I took a photo of it and went back to the office, researched it. It's a, okay. a stainless product that's made for surveries. And that's huh. how we introduce it, so when you cut on it, you don't scratch the hell out of your mouth. Brilliant. Wondering about, wondering how, why don't you come on down? Mm. 
think? Because the, the bread's not very fresh. Huh? So I thought the tomato might overpower the bread. It's wor it's working. Mm hmm I mean, I love tomato. Mm hmm Try anything else. Me too. So that's a staple. That's a staple Australian. You go camping or caravanning, dude, you have plenty of sausages in your fridge. This is a gourmet one because <laughs> it's got tomato on it. Oh, okay. I don't know if I've ever put tomato on it. It's awesome. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Did it work? Nailed, nailed it. <laughs> Yum. Vehicle. You like it? I love it. Does it feel? What does it feel like to you compared to like driving a Jeep? Like, well, give me, give me the comparison. Well, no, this this thing is a, it's it's like a truck, like a tractor, like a fast tractor. It feels, you know, it's pretty, pretty strong, and uh, of course, it's not as smooth the suspension and the ride, but the thing is awesome. Yeah, dude, and it's still like, I mean, even to me, like this whole weekend just looking at it, it's still just such a cool truck, isn't it? It's a man's truck. It's, it's all man, that's what I keep telling my wife. I tell Sarah, I'm like, babe, it's a man's truck. Yeah, absolutely. Do you reckon you're the first Mexican in the 79 series to drive on the beach on Fraser Island? Probably, yeah. <laughs> what I can assure you is that I'm the first Mexican driving the major games. 79 series in Fraser Island. Hell yeah, brother. Look, the plan is, I think now we're gonna head back to like campsite three, which is uh, down near Happy Valley. Um, Happy Valley's got a little store there and it's got gas and that sort of stuff, but we're not gonna go in there this afternoon. It's, what time is it? It's like 1.30. Um, so I think we'll just have a nice afternoon on the beach. Hopefully this weather holds out for us, huh? No, it works for me, man. All right, that's the plan. Are you copy? Loud and clear. But on your left hand, left hand um, beside the steering wheel is the lockers. So you can put the lockers in if you like. They're just electronic. It's a little dial just all the way to the right front, uh, front end rear. What happens is that Mexicans, they make everything a fiesta. <laughs> Putting on a show, mate. Season 7 is underway, and to celebrate a new season and the launch of the Patriot Campers Gen 2 range, we're giving you the chance to win this next Gen Explorer package valued at over $175,000, featuring an all new camper trailer from Patriot Campers. Designed to conquer any terrain, this lightweight off-road camper trailer is packed with intelligent features that will take your off-the-grid adventures to a whole new level so you can get off the beaten track and explore Australia like never before. Towing your camper trailer will be an all-new Isuzu D-Max, 
with a 3-litre turbo diesel engine and 3.5 tonne towing capacity. Fully kitted out for a Patriot Games adventure using the gear we know and trust. Giving it more carrying capacity with a Norweld tray and canopy. A complete electronic suite from Red Arc. More connection with an XRS radio platform from GME. And a serious power upgrade with a Torquid exhaust. Wrapping the D-Max in bar work from Off-Road Animal. A set of P-Core signature wheels and a two inch lift from Superior Engineering. Rigged out with recovery gear from Max Tracks and a fully equipped kitchen with a Dometic fridge and cookware plus loads of camping gear and accessories. Enter online for free at patriotgames.tv or gain additional entries by purchasing any camping gear or apparel from Patriot Supply when you use the promo code SEASON7 at checkout. Enter today at patriotgames.tv So what we're going to do, beachworming is not my thing, right? So my buddies have introduced me to it. I've tried it once. I cannot get, I cannot catch them. I don't, can't figure out how they do it, but we might let the girls have a run around and we'll have a competition going on and see if someone gets a beachworm. Because we're going to get low tide really soon. So hopefully we can get some hippies and some beachworms. I'm, if you've been watching pastry games, you know I'm definitely no pro fisherman. But beach fishing, I really, really enjoy, and it's something I used to do with my dad a fair bit, and I did with my kids when they were young. If you go in through there, you'll actually get it into your spine. So again, you've got more chance of it uh, staying on. I always get the hook tips just coming out, then some fish grabs it. fish out there, would you eat that? If you were swimming around and you saw that, like going through the water, would you go? I would. Backwards up the beach, so when you get up the beach, you can drag him onto the sand. Keep going, keep going, that's a good fish, man. Okay, now just drag it back all the way up the beach. Fish number one, Mr. yeah! <laughs> Quick, dude, that was less than a minute. Oi, Marco, ceviche! Well done, dude. Yeah, my first fish ever caught in Australia. Thank yeah. you. I don't know what that is, but he looks good. That was a shark, man. It was a shark? Yep. Or a drop bear. It, it could have been the drop bear. Late afternoon, if they don't get a good feed inside, sometimes they go out in the ocean and they, they swim around in the breakers and they catch fish. Drop bears. Drop if they can't get enough to eat out there, that's what they do. They're, they're, these drop bears, they're, they're, um, yeah, they're terrifying. They can do everything well. Hey, you got one! You got a pee -pee. Very well done. Oi, down on that. They're here, then. Yeah. You just wiggle your feet like this. And you 
you've got to kind of keep moving around. Like you'll get deep enough. Oh, there we go. You call him? Yep. <laughs> All right, seem to spew water out. Keep them because they're here. There's, there's plenty of them. Okay. Wait till it starts dragging back because it, it'll suck the sand away from your feet. So I kind of wiggle like this. Go home until you get a bigger fish now, man. How are we going to feed everyone with one fish? That's not enough for That's, ceviche. No, it's not enough. Another, but we're, def one. we're definitely making ceviche out of that. All right, everyone's had a first year today. I'm going to catch a beach worm. That is my plan for this afternoon. I can't believe I got pippies. I can't believe Brad first cast got a fish. Marco is definitely going to get a fish. I've got to get a beach worm and my trip will be complete. This is how Australian is this? This is a sick afternoon. This is the, what a way to end the trip. No beach worm luck. Yep, not enough. Not enough. Not enough. So Marco's gonna make ceviche with that um with Brad's fish. I'm sure it's a tailor, I think it's just a juvenile, I think it's just a baby one. Um anyway, we're gonna call it a tailor. If we're wrong, we're gonna correct it in the comments. I think it's just a juvenile, but that's it's definitely legal size. This knife isn't the sharpest, but we should be alright. Awesome dude. Well, I'm glad one of you guys caught it. Pippies. Put them in this bucket and you need to let them in there for a couple of hours and they'll do they spit all the sand out of themselves. Otherwise when you when you open them and then cook them you get obviously sand. And that's not good. No, that's not good. Remember what they said about the purple ones? You gotta throw them back. It's gonna get back, darling. Well according to the traditional owners. It's their way of ensuring nobody takes more than what they need. It's obviously a wives tale, they're not really female ones. They said all the purple ones go back. So Juliana was out there and she caught a big old bucket of what looks like clams. Pippies. But they're pippies. Pippies. What's the difference? I have no idea. I think pippies are from Australia and clams are from America maybe. And they actually run along the sand in the shallows of the water. Okay. And then when the tide runs out, they dig themselves into the sand, but they, they open their shell. Yeah. So they're obviously full of sand. So if you take them straight out and open them up, put them in a fry pan, it's going to be really gritty. Okay. So we'll leave them in there for, you know, they've been in there 15 minutes, maybe another half an hour. Then we'll cut them open, we're going to fry them up with some garlic. Yeah. And we're just going to make garlic, olive oil, pasta. That's it. Perfect. Salt and pepper. Yeah. That's yeah. all you need. Very, very simple, but beautiful. Yeah. Really nice flavor. Yeah. This is a fish that Brad uh, fished in the ocean. Uh, Justin let, delayed the whole thing. I chopped it really, really thin, as you can see. And now I'm chopping onions. We're going to squeeze like four, three or four lemons, I think. So the acid from the lemon will cook this. So like this. Okay. Then the onion. There's more ingredients coming, but I do this first because uh, that'll give them more time for the lemon to do its this job. Yeah, this is uh, Ash one of Ashton and Christian's favorites. <laughs> they love it. And you know wh where I had the best ceviche ever in my life? Cabo, Mexico. Yeah, oh, of course. We caught fresh dolphin fish yep. off the coast and we were fishing for marlin while we were fishing for marlin. The deckhand made uh, ceviche with us for us with uh, dolphin fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty really popular um, Mexican fish. Without having a beer. Cheers, brother. Cheers, brother. Awesome. Great day. So I've got the, the pippies or the clams in the top. 
I think we're going to actually steam them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a little bit of butter. So, garlic and the pippies. A bit of jalapeno. Hey, yeah, I've got a little bit of Mexican in me, Marco. Some jalapenos in there. See that garlic kind of just brown off a little bit, and then I've got I've got some white that I stole from Regina. Look at this. Look at that. It is blowing. Like, look at the wind going everywhere. Big shout out to the new Dometic stoves. High output, only thing that we put in the Patriot X range. If you're looking for a camp stove, that is the only way to go. It's, it's the best camp stove that I've found so far. A bit of white wine. We'll get that in there and we're just gonna let that reduce right down and I'll turn that down to a simmer. I've got that stove just pumping, but you can hear even with all that wind, it's just, these things are awesome, I love them. And we're just gonna let that do its thing. Mm, bit of pasta. Do you guys smell that? Smell that flavour? Garlic, jalapenos, pippies, white wines coming out. Nom, nom. Come here. <laughs> Cucumbers, man. Cucumbers are the best. Corn chips and that, like it's like a dip. That's a whole meal on its own. Uh huh. No good. <laughs> we wouldn't like it, it right? It. No, no, come no, on, no, come no, on, come on. It. It's your fish, man. You got it. All right, come on. Thank you for catching that fish, buddy. Yeah, I never thought I would catch a tailor fish in Australia, but I'm glad that we're putting it to good use. Here we go. Dude, it's so good. Justin, get in there, buddy. Oh. That is amazing, oh, dude. Right, right, right. Oh, that's gonna be gone in a heartbeat. I'll be wow. Yeah. I, I, uh, There's a party in my mouth. Anyone seriously. Want? Whoa. Oh, seriously. Ah, uh, whoa. Yeah, dude. That is mental. Yeah. That is unbelievable. And he made it at camp, right? Like, Dude. just with some stuff. Just like, oh, there's a fish, let's make something. Yeah, right. You're right. so lucky. You know how lucky you are? Mm. You need to try some. The flavor in that, there's like 10 different things going on in your mouth, hey? When you eat it, it is unbelievable. And when you watch him do it, he does it no effort, huh? No effort. No effort. He, but he makes this like every week. Yeah, he does. <laughs> good, huh? Super good. I mean, the ingredients are not all of them. I can get them here, mm -hmm. but still. Good. Pippies here, all that white wine juice. Just gonna get that in there. Olive oil. Lemon. Skills. 
Okay. <laughs> what do you reckon, Marco? Let me just check that. Good enough salt. You are darling. Thank you. Mm. Oh, that's excellent. Mm. Mm. That's excellent. It's good? Yeah. Oh yeah. The lemon? Lemon good? Oh dude, those are super tender. It's pretty simple. Pepper, pippies, and pippies pasta. A gauri. Mm -hmm. Is that a good way to end the trip? Mm. There you go, a bit more salt and pepper. I don't want to go. I know Regina doesn't want to go home. Disappointed? Yeah. Not at all. No? Not at all. Not at all. I, I wish we could stay three, four more days. Yeah. Yeah. See the whole thing and experience the rest of it. But at least you got a taste and this might be enough to bring you back, I think. Dude, this was so incredible. I was thinking about it this morning when I was making my coffee. I was like, you know, we came out here and we got to experience it through your eyes, mm. through your family history. Mm. And then and then to come out here to Gari and experience the culture that you introduced us to, yeah. to, to those folks. Yeah, big one Dude, tonight, though. you couldn't come to Australia and have an experience like this. Yeah. This has been incredible. Yeah, it's been absolutely amazing, even for me. Yeah. And I don't think the reaction from you two guys, seen your reaction, I think it was like we had the conversation when we were in hands up when we were traveling together, you know what I mean? To see the reaction from somebody else, for me, <clears throat> probably makes me think a lot, a lot of questions you guys ask, why is this like this, or why is that like that, and I'm kind of like, it just is, I don't know why, it just is, yes. you know, and it's probably just forced, forced me to maybe think about, you know, the place a little bit more, but, um, yeah, a little bit sad, it's the last day, and it's a Monday, and work's turned back on, yeah. so your brain starts going back into that mode, right. and we will just enjoy this last morning, I think we'll have a lot the uh, last breakfast and um, yeah, head down the beach and we still got a beautiful drive back back down the Gulf. Oh yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. it's been an epic trip, huh? Epic. It was epic. epic. Thank epic. you so much for yeah. putting this up together and then you're welcome. Yeah. 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 Thank you, man.
me. I'll still, I'll still see it. I'm like, yes. <laughs> it's so good. It's so it is, good. It is. All right, guys. So that's it for our Gary Fraser Island adventure. Please have fun. Awesome. Put your hand up if you've had fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys. Keep an eye out on the Trail Recon channel. Keep an eye out on the Overland X channel. Have a look at the three different perspectives of this amazing trip. And we'll see you on the next episode of Patriot Games. Major, major. The whole fan off the front of the engine has snapped off, and the pump snapped off, and the fans punched through the radiator. And uh, we got bogged. Yep. Backed up. Uh, put it in the first gear. Tried to get it. Bo got bogged. Backed up again. Uh, put it in low. Came up. We got some good momentum. Probably running about 3,000 RPMs, and um, we start saw, seeing some steam coming from underneath the hood yep. and uh, we made it up here but it, it wasn't feeling good and the clutch was sticking hard too so yeah. as soon as you come up here like there was water pumping out everywhere I'm like oh well it's done a hose or maybe cracked a radiator but it's a lot worse than that so this will be the very first time ever and I'm not trying to make history here that the black truck's gonna get towed home oh that's a that's a irreparable it's over yep but we're on the hard ground, yeah. so if this would have happened down there, yeah. we would have had a real big problem. And then we'll hook this up to the TRX, and I'll pull you guys all the way down to the barge. It'll probably be, I can pull the whole lot, obviously on the hard road, but then when we get down to the barge, I don't I'll really struggle to get you onto the barge. So it's gonna be, yeah, a bit of a recovery, but we'll get it back to Rainbow. I'll get on the phone to uh, the office, and I'll get a tow truck right waiting for us. It's gonna to have to get towed home. There's just, there's nothing we can do. Sorry, it, is, it is what it is. I'm sorry, man. I mean, it's not your fault, dude. It's I was, just. I was driving your baby. It's just one of those things. I'm blaming Regina, actually. <laughs> She's been driving most of the weekend. Uh, that's possible. Exactly. She and I were. Maybe were she, each maybe other. she wanted you back in. I think she did. Yeah. She, she liked me. And you know, you know what I just said. Man, this has been an easy trip. Oh no! I'm like, dude, this. But I was referring to filming. I was referring to filming. I meant this has been a really easy trip filming, but yeah, it's going to turn into a bit of a longer day. But we still got plenty of time. Yeah. Let's do some juggling. Uh, let's get some stuff kind of hooked up to some other stuff, and um, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Now, obviously, no, because it's my company. We run a safety factor of four to six. Can't remember if it's four on the recovery point. So the recovery points can actually take a ton, but they're only rec uh, rated in a recovery situation of, of two ton. Now, you've got to allow for load, sand, bogging, all the rest of it. So I'm confident, 100%, that we've got the right load rating uh, to get this thing to where we need to go. But once again, it's not what our recovery points are rated to. Using the core shackles, they've got a braking strain of 14 ton. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the black truck a fuse shackle. Now that's got a braking strain of 7 ton. And it's called a fuse shackle because it's exactly that. It's designed to be the weakest link in the chain. So it's 7 tons. Again, like I said, going with the 4 times safety factor on the 2 ton load rating that I've got there. 7 ton is under 8 ton. If something lets go, it's going to be that. And that's what it's designed to do. Alright buddy, just let me know when I take up slack. Yep, coming up now. Good, slack's up. Alright mate, I've got you. Just put your hazard lights on mate, just in case anyone comes up behind. Yep, you got it. Hey Brad, remember that time I towed you off Fraser Island? 
Uh, I'm remembering it at this very moment, my friend. I'm also remembering it like right now. What have you done to my truck? Brother, I'm sorry, man. We we were just trying to get through that sand and uh, it was working hard and uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I'm sorry, dude, I'm sorry. Man, all good. It is, it's all part of the adventure. When you said uh, the battery light's on, I'm like, oh yeah, it's done an alternator. That's pretty standard for the 1B day. The alternator's right down the bottom. I didn't expect to see that. Yeah, I mean, we we were running through that sand, trying to get momentum, running about 3,000 RPMs through there. And, uh, and so I didn't hear anything, but we definitely saw a little bit of steam start to come up from underneath the hood. And I was like, oh, that's not good. Ah, uh, dude, look, it is what it is. I'll be honest, right now, I cannot literally feel that you guys are behind me in this TRX. Oh, that's crazy, dude. That thing has so much more smell. I'd like, I'd literally, can, I can feel like a little bit of a tug on the road on the back, but cruising along at like 40 kilometers an hour, I don't even know you're there. Yeah, wow, well, that's awesome. Good way to save fuel. Buddy, we got, um, I reckon at this pace, it might take us, oh, I don't know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. We'll get down to um, the barge and then we'll shorten that rope right up and I'll, um, I'll pull you straight onto the barge and we'll get a tow truck at the other end. Sounds good, my friend, sounds good. I, I thought I was going to be free and clear on uh, taking care of your baby, but uh, mission not accomplished. No, that one's definitely not your fault. Well, look, enjoy the serenity. Pretend you're in an electric-powered 79 series on Gari and um, I just enjoy the rest of the trip. So with a silence, will it be easier to hear if any drop bears are coming at us? That's uh, actually, that's the scary part. Yeah, I'd put your windows up because the, the sound of engines, like gas engines, they kind of scare them away. Electric vehicles, I'm not really sure. You know, you might have a bit more of a problem. Roger, got that, okay. So windows up. 